So on my website, and this is the page called Provenance, um, I talk a lot about J.S. Bibbins, so I'm just going to talk about him today. I give a lot of links to information that I've found. I have a lot of screenshots, but I thought it might be kind of fun to actually show you those web pages because I know a lot of people are too lazy to go through these things. So since I own it, I've spent hours of research trying to check on, you know, Providence and uh, research anything and everything I could about J.S. Bibbins, who is the photographic artist. Um, this was done in Newark, Illinois. And as I show on here, uh, here's one other, I couldn't find much on the internet. That was also J.S. Bibbins in Newark, Illinois. But what I did, it always said photographer. And so I think that he, you know, was someone who did a reprint, much like this 1845 image per um, Julia, the oldest daughter of Joseph Smith and Emma, that wrote on here in pencil that this is baby David who was born. There's a baby there. He's not. So, I mean, the little controversy there why some people brush me off that are historians um, because my picture is on a Carta Vista paper. So that was patented around the 1850s. Um, but paper photography and a use of negatives, which allowed you to reprint pictures and also have them in the correct perspective, was patented like four years before Joseph Smith's death in 1844. And so that's how you have an 1845 image per Julia Smith, their oldest daughter, in her own photo album. And she wrote on pencil saying, this is baby David. You know, if, if it was taken in the 1850s, it wouldn't be a baby David Hiram, who says right there that his father was killed. And he was born three months after his father was killed, what Julia wrote on there. And it says Mrs. Joseph Smith and son. Um, anyway, that is a reprint. Um, you'll see other reprints of that on his website if you look here. Of that same picture... Like right here, this is a reprint on a Carta Vista. Because it was a paper photograph with negatives. You could reprint it. You could not reprint daguerreotypes, even though both mediums existed and were invented basically at the same time. Anyway, let's find out about J.S. Bibbins, though, um, and a lot of these links that I have here. Um, so it shows Newark, Illinois. Um, when I look at this page, you got kendallelkin.org. Anyway, this is Kendall County Pioneers. It's like a genealogy website. So they're showing here the given name, um, place of birth, place of death, year of arrival. Okay, let's scroll down and look at the Bibbins. I do screenshots of a lot of these things. But um, Elisha, who's a reverend. That's his father. We're going to talk about him today. Uh, and I talk about on the website as well. Born in 1790. Okay, he died in 1859. Then he got Joseph Slocum, son of a Reverend Elisha and Alice Lanthrop. Born November 1st, 1821. November 1st, 1821. Dies 1891 in Plano, Illinois. And so Plano is in the same county as Newark. Uh, go to this page here. We learn a little more. So there is even a picture of his father, Elisha Bibbins. If you looked at my website, you'll know why he is interesting. Um, he is a circuit rider on the Tioga Circuit in Pennsylvania in eight, around 1815. Um, this is just someone's kind of, I mean, it's a nice website. There's some misinformation on here, but, but they do talk about Joseph Bibbins. They even reference him as J.S. Bibbins. You'll see on the top son, J.S. Bibbins now living in where? Newark, Illinois. So they're just talking about a lot of interesting things there. But anyway, there's Elisha Bibbins. I want to show you why that is interesting because it's josephmcjr.org. They start talking about a circuit writer named Elisha Bibbins. 
um, that they they encouraged people to vocally um, give prayers in the woods. And so they mentioned him several times on josephsmithjr.org, which is run and has a lot of just um, articles and blogs by the direct descendants or wives of direct descendants of Joseph Smith and Emma. And so they have access to a lot more journals and things. And and so they have that story. There's Elisha Bibbins again. They talk about him being the circuit writer and how he, he greatly influenced Emma and her spirituality. Um, he was a Methodist preacher. She was Methodist. So was Joseph Smith Jr. He more leaned towards Methodism. And, of course, then you have him praying in the woods as she was. And that's when he, as we believe, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I believe that's when he saw God the Father and Jesus Christ in the woods. Um but she was praying for her father and then Isaac, who was a little bit cynical towards religion and didn't want praying in his home. And, you know, it really changed her life. And so I would think she would remember and know if she saw Elisha Bibbins as her sons ended up living. Where did they run the church? In Plano, Illinois. So it's the same city that my photographer died in. And they lived there from 1866 to 1881. Jess Bibbins died in Plano in 1890. Um, yeah, and he was younger. No, he's, he was older. Sorry, he was older than Jess Smith III. But, um, but yeah, they crossed paths. And either way, the photographer, uh, Newark, Illinois, is in the same county as Plano. But that's why this is interesting. So I didn't know till, you know, I would find out things and update my website, update my website. I think I'm just going to redo everything maybe this weekend when I'm on vacation, Christmas vacation. But, um, yeah, that's why it's kind of random. And I have so many things I have to update on my website because I just find out new things. Um, as I research GS Bibbins and there's just so many different articles Things you can find. Um, here's the directory of Kendall County. You got J.S. Bibbins, who's a clerk with IMPS Lot. If you look at his headstone, J.S. Bibbins, um, his wife's maiden name was Lot. So um, that's probably how he got to know her through work. And so, what that is, is just a biographical directory of voters and taxpayers of Kendall County. Um, so the provenance is quite strong for this website for, I mean, for my, um, for my photograph. And so this summer when I became convinced that this was Joseph Smith, I didn't know all this, but it was like 10 years ago, you know, you have the whole debacle with, um, the juvenile instructor and all these people that are historians, if they had just researched a few of these things, there's so much information out there that it was so supportive. Um, but instead, people just chose to be really negative, which is really sad. And so sometimes when you're totally negative and closed off like that, your brain just stops working and you stop researching because you're prideful and you think you know everything. But you don't. And it's just really sad that they close their minds on that website and just all these other people just because there's this guy that had this photograph about 10 years ago um, that wasn't mainstream LDS and so all the mainstream members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints you know just cut this guy off because there are a lot of other people you know and I have to remind myself to be respectful of like the community of Christ and there are a lot of other breakaway groups that I'm learning and finding out about that are not necessarily Mormon or LDS or members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints um, that love Joseph Smith and learn about him and believe in him, that he was a prophet. So um, this guy was just one of those people, you know, and he had a lot of historical things wrong, so then he just couldn't be right about anything, could he? And it's just a shame. And so I'm sure on eBay he probably actually had a picture of just the back of the photo in and of itself could show so much providence and all these books that are you know, showing this connection to being in the correct location and his father knowing Emma Smith 
you know, it just, if people had just been more open-minded 10 years ago, you know, maybe things could have moved forward, but people are just, um, often just think they know everything without doing research. Um, so I think the most intelligent people in the world don't believe they know everything and keep their mind open. And so, so that's what I've been doing. So since I bought this photo, I've been learning so many fascinating things. So if you just look at my website, I give a lot of links to things. I just, I know a lot of people are too lazy to click on them or to hit the search button and find Joseph Slocan on this really 55 page long one blog entry there like if you go to this page it's actually really it's really far down there like really far down you have to search to find that story it's just way way far down there but um but they've done immense amounts of research because this is run by the direct descendants of joseph smith and emma and so they have journals they have those things so if i could find a journal of joseph slocum bambins that would be really cool um because I've started reading different articles of people from the RLDS church that, um, of course, have access to a lot of things by Joseph Smith III. Um, one scholarly article of someone that was RLDS, or Community of Christ, um, did mention Joseph Smith III having a close friend that was a Methodist preacher. So, I don't know if anyone out there already has that book. I don't know if I up for reading every book he ever read because he could be quite negative but um maybe it's in there so if someone has a little tidbit if you know who that was um if in his book maybe he mentions J.S. Bivens I just don't know I don't know but I do know his um mother knew J.S. Bivens father I mean Joseph Smith III's mother Emma Smith knew J.S. Bivens father Elisha Bivens because, yeah, she was, like, eight years old. Elisha would have been, like, in his 20s. Um, but that was someone I think she would have remembered. And maybe they crossed paths. Who who knows? I'm sure there's a lot of stories to be told. Um, there's a lot, a lot more for me to find out and research. But anyway, uh, enjoy this video. <laughs>